That is a life-size picture that you painted yourself. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about it. Um, it was in. It was. In, I was inspired to paint the painting of um, the scenario that was presented to me. Um, the story was that when I was twenty-eight years old, I went back to college to do a fine art degree. Yeah. And um, during during my time in college, a, a cluster of different problems came in on top of myself. That um, I exhausted myself in my work, and I had like a nervous breakdown. So subsequently, I was diagnosed with schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. So I went into the mental health services then at uh, 28. So um, this this painting um, it touches upon a story that ha that happened to me um, after after I had my breakdown and I tried to return back to college to get my degree. Um, I was having counselling uh, one time, and um, in one of the sessions. It came up that I, I wanted to be a vegetarian because I had issues around eating meat, you see. So the counsellor was really interested. She focused in on this and she wanted to um, she wanted me to elaborate upon the idea. And I, I tried to um, explain it in more detail. I was saying that I, ha I was dwelling on the idea of eating meat and I wanted to become a vegetarian, that sometimes I was having nightmares about eating meat. You know, mm. I, I, I described it vividly as like sinking my teeth into flesh, right? Mm -hmm. This was the nightmare that I was having at the time. Yeah. Um, I, f I found out afterwards, a, a few months later, that um, there was a letter written to my, psych to my psychiatrist that um, I was um, I was fantasizing about eating flesh, you see. So it was kind rather of than having a nightmare of eating than, meat. Yeah, it was, it was, I felt it was presented completely out of context. And um, I was, they had this diagnosis of schizophrenic that they had to reinforce the label. So they looked for any way they could to um, reinforce the label. So they took what I said out of context and they fabricated this idea that um, that, that there was something really not right with me. But it, it was basically inspired by, um, I, I wanted to become a vegetarian and I believe, you know, that, that makes me more human, you know. It's, yeah. it's a spiritual thing that a lot of people go through, you know. Yeah. But um, And that's the inspiration behind... That's the inspiration behind the painting. Now, what what I've envisioned there is I'm I'm back in this smoking room on the ward in in um, in my pajamas that don't fit properly. Um, that I've painted myself chewing down on the person next to me. You know, yeah. That I, I I've adopted the sense of humour about it. That's the only way I cope with it. So yeah. it's kind of like a sarcastic play on on what was said about me. Yeah. But what really concerns me is um, that. Um, on the record after I'm dead, people will read that I had a fixation about eating flesh, you know. Um, Just because a psychiatrist put this because, in your report? Because a psychiatrist put this in my report and I feel I feel like I'm powerless to um, even approach them and change the record, you know. To well, you can. You actually can apply for an amendment of well, the record. Well, yeah, I, I am afraid. I am afraid yeah, to open course. that can of worms, you know. Yeah. I, I don't want, I, I, just for the sake of peace, I'm just leaving it alone. Yeah, no, I understand that. But you, you said that your, your art sort of evolved from your disability. You weren't, re I mean, you were very <clears> creative, but you had never actually taken to art the way well, you did. Well, I wanted to be an artist. Now, I went, when I was 28 years old, I returned to college to do a degree and it was in that time that I, I developed the mental illness. And it was like a blessing in disguise that um, I, it gave me, afforded me the, all the time in the world to invest in, in painting. So I really threw myself into my painting. Yeah. And um, it, it, it developed there. And I paint every day now. You know, I, I see myself as, as a bona fide artist now. To yeah. Me, you know. yeah. And your work is incredible. I know certainly um, in the Stay With Me show, people have been admiring the, the beautiful paintings that you've done. And you've told us the story about this one. Um, this is Hungry for Attention by you, Emmanuel. Hungry for Attention. Yeah. Um, based on that story. Based on that story. But the, the, the title is a play on the idea that, um, you know, uh, people with mental illness, there's a misconception that people are... Um, acting the way they do because they want attention or, or some some people might feel that way about people with mental illness. Um, so it's just a play on words. So being hungry yeah. for attention, you know, I'm, I'm doing all this for attention. But um, yeah, so... so um, well, it's a beautiful piece. I know everybody's been well, admiring I portray, it. I portrayed myself in when I first went into the mental health services. I was put on a psych ward that um, they made me wear these pyjamas that were two times too small for me. I felt so um, 
my dignity was stripped away on the first day, you know, of entering into the system. And this, this is something that you've talked to me about before. You said that you're, you're fearful for people. I know certainly it's, it's widely accepted that a lot of the mental health institutions in the past didn't treat patients well at all. I mean, no, it's, it's fairly well accepted. They didn't, definitely didn't. And I suppose that's an issue that you still have today, that you're fearful for young people suffering with mental health. Yeah, apart, apart from my own um, wounds, my own scars that I um, experienced in my time in the, in the psych wards, uh, I, do, I really do fear for the, for the young people. There might even be people watching this who don't realise they're going to face psychosis in the future. The, the, um, the, sister in, the system they're entering into can be very harsh and cruel at times to... Um, just in their approach and deal, dealing with a person with a mental illness. Um, and I think that's one of the things we tried to highlight in this show um, was the fact that um, it was bad enough being put into these institutions years and years ago. But if you had any sort of disability, she didn't really stand a chance at all. No, you had, you had no voice, I found. You had absolutely no mm. voice. And especially for in my own experience, there was no advocacy yeah. either. There was nobody else. There, once you go behind them locked doors in the institutions, the society just forgets you. Yeah. You know, and you have no voice. And of course, your family has experience of this because your uncle James Daly would be possibly one of the oldest men in Ireland with Down syndrome. He's in his sixties now. Yeah, he's he's uh, he's going strong now. Where uh, James is sixty four years. Um, yeah, James is profoundly Down syndrome. Well, why don't you tell us a bit about what happened to him? Because James appears in the Stay With Me show as well. And you'll see his art now uh, at the end of the show when we launch the new virtual Stay With Me. But James was in a lot of the very uh, famous old institutions. Um, and yeah, he, he was in uh, Grange Gorman for a time and he, he was in Ballyboden as well. And he was in Piedmont Sanatorium. Um, as, as far as I know. Yeah, and he didn't have good experiences there. But now this, this is a, a, a man that... When he was born to your grandmother, um, a doctor said, do you want to have us put it away? We can put it away. And your grandmother at that time said, no, God gave him to me and I'm keeping him. And there wouldn't have been a whole lot known about Down syndrome at the time. And your mom or your grandmother had other children as well. So she took him home and reared him. And your aunt Anne was telling me that she, you know, she was absolutely incredible with him. But it came a time in her life where she was too old and too, too sick and she didn't want his siblings taking him in. And she just felt, no, it'll be a burden. It'll be too difficult. Yeah. And so against, you know, her other children's wishes, James went into some institutions where he didn't have good experiences. Yeah, they're, they're, he, he went to, when, when Hannah, my, my granny, she, um, she became ill, she had to have an operation. That was when the decision was made to put James into care for a time. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly where he went. But um, in in his time in the care system, the stories came out like it's, it was common knowledge to us kids, um, his nephews, that um, some of the things that he went through. There was one day that my auntie turned up to the institution and he was chained naked to a bed, you know. And you'll see that in, in the in the painting that I painted. It's um, it's a I'm very sad painting. Yeah, I'm I'm using a bit of artistic license where he's um chained. He's literally chained to the bed in yeah. his in his underwear. It was actually a lot worse. Um, it's it's, naked, it's you know? a really, really powerful image, but it's also very, very sad. It's very, very sad. Yeah, I, I think um, you know the the way he was treated. It was it was so unfair because we know James as just like he was one of the gang to us when we were children. That he had a shining personality. He had his likes and his dislikes and everything. Like, yeah. Um, to to think that it, that was inflicted on his on his uh, personality, you know. Yeah. Um, he would have been tormented. He would have been tormented by being chained to a, to a bed, you oh. know. It was very sad. Wouldn't do it to a dog. Um, well, we really are grateful that you've loaned us your art for the show tonight. And uh, there's James there. There's, that's the painting. I there. mean, it's a very, very moving image. And it's called James for James. And it'll be coming up now in a few minutes in our new virtual Stay With Me show. We're streaming live on the Remembering the Tune Babies Facebook page. And we're also on the Stay With Me Art YouTube page. So just click on... The, the links there and uh, have a look and uh, the new art show will be coming soon. So if you stay with us, we'd um, really like to show you the new pieces. They're absolutely gorgeous. And I said, Emmanuel um, has got two large paintings in the show and they look absolutely incredible.